to describe a little bit more about how vision is made in your mind, kind of a continuation of what I was talking about before. I mean, I guess everything's kind of a continuation. It's all kind of the same thing. So I don't know. You can listen to these in any order. It doesn't really matter at this point. Just kind of getting these ideas out there. But basically what I want to do this time is there's um, something that Bates did with his patients, had them do. Well, okay, see, I want to give you something you can actually do. And you can come away with this and actually practice it right now. So I want to describe what he did and then describe a few things. And then in that context, how you could actually do it a little bit better than uh, what he was doing. So basically what he was doing with his patients is one thing he was doing is he would have them palm to begin with. And palming, if you're new to this, it's Basically, he would just have them close their eyes and cover them with the palms of their hands in such a way as to not th not touching their eyes with their palms, just kind of their palms crossed, their fingers crossed on their forehead, uh, but uh, fingers together and uh, basically in a way to exclude virtually all light, most of the light. And to, what it does kind of in a, people have different interpretations of this, but it's kind of a way just to people feel a little bit more maybe their eyes can relax a little bit better when their hands are kind of covering them for protection there's all kinds of ideas about that but what he what he found um was just that people were able to relax their eyes better when they covered them with the palms of their hands lightly in this way so you don't even have to do that but it's not critical but um Anyway, he would have him do that, and while doing that, he would have him visualize something black. And I think he liked black because of the the test card, you know, the wall, ch the eye chart that you'd hang on the wall in a doctor's office, and you read the letters uh, from 20 feet away or whatever distance, and um, or just the uh, a book that you would read, you know, black letters on a white background. He was really fond of that, but eventually, his assistant Emily found that um, really any color somebody visualizing any color really would work just as well as black did it really didn't matter at all and then um so you do that uh for a few moments and then he would have you take away your hands if your hands are there open your eyes just glance at the eye chart and then as soon as you do close your eyes again and uh for another few minutes and repeat and so basically this was called flashing the idea was that you would be closing your eyes. First, you would be relaxing your eyes in the beginning by closing them, covering them. And when you open them, it's only for a moment so that you don't have time to start straining your eyes. That's how he saw it. And I think there's a big element of truth to that. I just don't think that's everything that's going on. Either him or somebody else started suggesting visualizing the object that you're looking at while, while your eyes are closed instead of just any old random thing and when you open your eyes you'll be looking at it and that actually I think is quite a bit more effective when you can do it um, as I'll describe I'll get into that all right so yeah I want to explain some things here so when you see you gotta understand you are really looking at an image in your mind you're not looking at what's out there so it's not you you think that when the light rays come in there's a one-to-one -one relationship basically that you see a representation um, of exactly what is there whether it's uh, clear or blurry that basically every little piece that you see that you perceive in your visual field represents a piece out there and they're all they just coming through your eyes into your brain and they're reassembled in the right spot and that's what you see but that's not actually how it works it's not a one-to-one -one relationship as far as the the light rays and all the pieces that you perceive in the image in your head it's an illusion your mind actually fills up the holes. It fills up a lot of holes and it makes stuff up. It looks very convincing, 
be, and that's just because of the power of your mind. And it's so instantaneous that it, and it looks, it seems to be so easy, so quick that it's seems to be obvious that it's just, you're just seeing these, um, basically the result of the light rays. But there's so much more going on that you don't notice. You use other senses to determine what you think you see, and you, you do see it, you perceive it, even though you don't actually see all of that, and you use your, you pull from your memory, you use your imagination to consider what might be there, and as an example, here's some examples that kind of illustrate that. The Only the middle, only the very center of your vision is actually really clear or if you had clear vision anyone with clear vision and they have to keep looking around maybe clear is the wrong word um, clearest or the highest resolution maybe is the the better word but see they have to keep looking around for things really to appear sharp maybe is another good word because otherwise if they didn't you know it's it's so low resolution anywhere except the very center of their vision that really they can only see one thing at a time really clear, but they don't know that. Everything looks like it's equally clear because they keep looking around. Whatever they look at, it's clear. So you, you don't know unless you actually um, know about how the eyes work or you've um, had some opportunity to really think about or notice this as, as you've had it pointed out to you. And so while you're seeing, you're really just imagining everything else being clear, even though you're not actually seeing it that way. And another example says the if you've done the blind spot test, it's just you get a piece of paper. I don't know. It's been, I think the way I did it was um, I just found it. Someone was in school or something. I guess we all did it. It was a piece of paper. We looked at a certain spot on the paper and there was a, colored dot I think kind of to the side so that uh, you'd move your head to a certain distance away from the piece of paper and at some point the colored dot would just disappear when it's at a, a certain point out to the side of your vision and even not even that far to the side and what happens is it hits your it hits the spot in your vision where your uh, optic nerve connects to the retina and so there's no photoreceptors in that spot and so normally if you don't if you can't see something say when your eyes are closed you just perceive black if you don't have light rays coming in but in this case even though you don't have light rays coming in to that spot in your vision even though it kind of occupies a point in your visual field or an area in your visual field of a significant size you don't perceive black in that spot your vision your mind kind of fills it up with other stuff so you don't even know about this about the uh, this uh, your blind spot unless you um, do this experiment or uh, you know have it pointed out to you and then you can think about blind people can visualize I guess depending on how long they've been blind, people who could see at a certain point they've got enough memories to, you know, who knows exactly. I remember this book I read by Jacques Le Ceyron, if I'm saying his name right. I forget the name of the book. But he was, um, he was in an accident when he was a kid, and his glasses actually... Is shattered and the shards of glass went in his eyes. He had to have his eyes removed. And he says it was the best thing that ever happened to him. His book's really fascinating, but he's talking about how he can visualize, basically. And it's a really fascinating book. Uh, I don't remember the name, but I don't, I'll write it in the comments or something. And of course, you can visualize too. If you're particularly good at visualizing, you'll get a really vivid image where. Everything seems complete. It's very clear. It's very convincing, just like you are looking physically with your eyes. Or, of course, when you're dreaming or in any altered state where you're uh, getting some really vivid images popping up like that. And those images aren't coming from your eyes. Tom Campbell, really fascinating guy, 
he was um, he's a physicist and uh, really into meditation and he's you know what he's I don't know about a lot I'm not really well read and but you know in my mind he's as far as I know he is one of the like easily top five uh, most brilliant guys that I know of today and I've read his books pretty interesting they get kind of technical near the end but anyway he would describe it as switching data streams so the visual data instead of coming from your eyes it's coming from your mind you know somewhere else so the thing to take away from this is your eyes really just do the job of gathering more information you already have a ton of information visual data inside your mind that you've gathered that you can put together and your eyes are just gathering more of it it's not you don't have to 100 percent depend on your eyes for visual data okay you're just getting more and when you look at something you can't make your eyes focus all you can do is point them in the right direction towards what you want to visualize really because when you're perceiving you are visualizing towards what you want to visualize and they'll just they'll gather what they can whether it's clear or blurry but with that in mind I want to suggest something that you can do so when you're closing your eyes and visualizing like Bates describes what you're really doing is you're getting into the mode of acknowledging that you see with your mind and that's the most important that's what's critical here really and so when you open your eyes instead of just opening them for an instant for a flash keep your eyes open but you gotta do this right or it doesn't work and so when you keep them open you just continue that visualizing what you're looking at or you continue to remind yourself that your eyes are only gathering information that you can't consciously focus your eyes there's really nothing you can do if things are blurry you can only point your eyes in the right direction towards what you want to visualize that's really all you're doing as you practice this you want to keep looking around at different things because it gets boring just looking at one thing and that's what it's all about I mean you gotta keep up your interest it's a natural part of seeing you gotta look at what you're interested in or it doesn't work very well closing your eyes before you do this practicing visualizing something should help because it really gets you in the mode so you're not distracted by what you're seeing you know by or by what you're taking in with your eyes if you can't get a good clear image to pop up in your head that's okay I wrote some I wrote a blog post a while back it was some time back about how to visualize basically what it's all about I mean the best way to go about it it doesn't have to be perfect really I think if it's if you can visualize something better than what you can currently see it as with your eyes then I think it's got to be a benefit so don't worry too much about that but you know what maybe I'll make another video about the uh, how to go about visualizing and one thing I just want to point out these things I'm describing or suggesting in these videos they're just parts of an overall approach and you really kinda need a comprehensive approach or a lot of things to try and this might not work too well for you or you can experiment with it try and find something that if you modify it a little bit it works a little bit better and you know please share what you find and leave your comments below